first of all, thank you very much, Ryanji, for coming here for doing this podcast with us. I think we have a great topic to talk about today, where we're going to be talking about like music or entertainment industry and about royalties and copyrights and laws around that. You know, so first, you were an international student back in US, first, right? Yes. Uh, so I I came to United States uh, back in two thousand and eight. Mm-hmm. And I came here as in, uh, you know, to uh, do my bachelor's degrees uh, in a business. Mm-hmm. So uh, after 2012, uh, you know, I, I, I started uh, entering into the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So and now I'm here, you know. <laughs> what what does being an international student back there looks like? Because we talk a lot about, lot about international students here in Australia. But... Yes. What is it like being there? What was your experience, or what was like your journey being an inter student there? Yeah, so you know, uh, when uh, when I came in two thousand and eight, right? Two thousand eight was the uh, midst. It was in the midst of a financial mm. crisis, right? Financial uh, crisis. The, the prospect of jobs were not very good. Economy was not doing good. Good. And because of those, uh, there were so many social issues mm. uh, that uh, you know United States was facing at the moment. So, and uh, as an international student, so what what that means is you don't know nothing about the land, you don't mm-hmm. know the system, you don't know the rules, you don't know the regulations, you don't have friends, you don't have families, right? So you come to this new land and you have to learn everything from scratch. So it was a you know it it it, it was very overwhelming, mm. uh, but. Uh, like many students like me, you know, there were thousands of Nepalese students who came uh, in the United States to pursue their higher education. Mm. Uh, like everyone else, you know, I also figured out the way, you know, I learned uh, the system, I learned the way, mm. uh, the American way, you know. Mm. Uh, so it, it was a bit of a rough ride, but uh, I'm very happy that I got that opportunity uh, to come here and, you know, learn so much thing about this society. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I look forward to implement that back into, uh, back into my own country uh, in Nepal. That's great to know. Do you, so, how is like the job perspective for like students out there? Is it easier to find jobs, especially professional jobs, or you just have to start with odd jobs like here? Uh, no, when you are students, you know the law in United States is uh, a little bit different than in the Australia, right? Mm. In Australia, you get the work permit to, uh, you know, you, you can work certain hours. It's very mm. easy to get that permit. But in the United States, you cannot do that. You can only work in your college. You cannot work outside of college. Mm. So if you want to work outside of college, then you need to uh, obtain a special permit. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, besides that, you know, uh, the thing is now the Nepalese community or even the South Asian community in uh, Canada and United States has grown in numbers, you know. Mm. Uh, if you go to the, any major cities or even in smaller towns, you you are going to find somebody from your country or from mm. South Asia. So what that makes is, you know, that that gives the network, that gives uh, that gives you, that provides you uh, with the access uh, to, uh, to the market, you know, so where you can mm. go uh, and use your service, you can provide your service and then uh, you know, you can take care of yourself financially. Mm-hmm. So even you are in uh, when you are in a student, uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not like in two thousand three or two thousand and eight. You mm. know, it's, it's a different world right now. So, now yeah. I must, I think it's it must be much easier for students because of yeah, yes. network. And you know, we we also have social media right now, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we have a groups that has thirty thousand students connected. Mm. You know, forty thousand people, ten thousand people connected, and they are helping each other uh, succeed in this new world. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the significant change, which has uh, which has eliminated so many barriers that you know we as a student faced when we came in here. Mm-hmm. So, True, I have I've heard that similar kind of situation with people out here, like who came in here really like eight or ten years ago. They say that although we have our own kind of struggle right now, but you know, in terms of like getting a guidance those kind of things yeah. i think it was much it's much easier for us somehow now yes it is it is and and you know um, right now we, um, i think every every person who comes in now they they mm. have a uh, food to land on you know mm. it wasn't like you don't know anything you already know when when the new students comes in 2021 or 2020 mm. they have somebody here already yeah. So, so they have that support system built up because we came in early and we were so hard. 
So mm. it's it's now easier for the next generation to be come here and start right away. You know, we yeah. give them whatever we face, they don't have to face. <laughs> true, true. So, That's mm-hmm. true. And what kind of cultural differences did you face like when you when they're in 2008? Where, did you had to go through any kind of like cultural difficulties? Like it was completely different system, of course. But in terms of culture, what was it like for you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we 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 come from a uh, very Eastern Eastern culture, right? Where we have mm. to respect everybody. Uh, we cannot talk back to our parents. We, mm. we cannot ask questions, right? So when we, when we come in here, you know, uh, even even about approaching people, like mm. talking with each other, building that relationship, it's it's totally opposite in here. Mm. You know, you cannot be you cannot be conservative and stay within yourself. You know, you have to you know open yourself and you know reach out to the people so that you could get the help you need or you know uh, so you can you could progress in your life. Mm. Uh, in, in terms of culture, you know uh, what. One thing I, I noticed is, you know, uh, there are so many things uh, that we get taught in our childhood that mm-hmm. keeps us from, you know, open, going out there and, uh, you know, approaching people. Like, but here, uh, like, for example, something about the science uh, or talking to a new people, right? Mm. We, we are not taught how to uh, bridge the gap, you know, the, to bridge the cultural gap. We, we were only told to, uh, you know, bend over and just respect the elders and just mm. do what they they told us to do, right? So it, it's it's quite different uh, culturally. Uh, there is uh, people here like uh, when you talk to them, right? Mm. And it's totally di- opposite in Nepal, right? It's yeah. pretty. So that that is the one thing I um, uh, I find uh, different than Nepal. Uh, there is there is also the way. Uh, the, the thinking of the society is uh, totally mm. different. You know, uh, when we come, when we're in Nepal, we are taught that we are su- we are the superior race. You know, our culture is better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, our gods are better than everybody else. Our systems is better than everybody else. Mm. And when you come into the United States, when you go to class, and they taught us that it's it's not about who is better. You know, the the thinking that we have it's it's a it's a disease, right? It's mm-hmm. ism. Like you know. Something it's, ism, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, ism. You know, uh, when you think you are superior than another race or another religion or, or another culture or another society, then it's ism. Hmm. So that 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 opens up the whole, uh, you know, the world around us, right? Hmm, hmm. The whole uh, the whole system that we're brought in that that, that it was just get sadder in minutes, you know. Hmm, hmm. Um, and that, that is the one thing that I get to learn in here. Um, and they also taught us uh, how to mm-hmm. uh, approach to a different cultures, how to respect them, uh, you know. So th- those are, these are the fundamental things. Um, I think that uh, that is what the best about the United States. One of the things that I love about being here, and I think it, it is true for there to like, where we don't have that, mm-hmm. as you were saying, label of superiority, even in terms of like how we speak, it's just you. There is no like ta timi or ta pai. It's just you, you know. It just makes things so direct, yes. and it's much easier to talk to people that way. I think. Yes. Do you think there that? There is no grading in here, right? You you can talk to your professor. You know, you can ask any questions you want. You can talk to a police. You can talk to a minister. You can even call your congressman, right? You, mm-hmm. And then you can tell them what you don't like about the policy that they are building. So in Nepal, you cannot do that. You cannot mm. talk. <laughs> you cannot call the parliamentary and tell them what they should do, right? Mm. You have no access there. So it's quite different, you know. And I think Australia and United States is similar. I, much of the Western uh, civilization is, you know, mm. they are built in uh, uh, so norms and values. So I I think it's pretty similar with Australia. Mm. Yeah, true. Thank you for your story there. Now let's get into your profession and what you are doing because that's what we're here to talk about mainly. So let's just start yes. with like, what does an entertainment industry in Nepal looks like? Like, what have you seen? Like, since you have worked for so long, what was it like before? What is it like now? What's happening in the entertainment industry? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you know, we we, we had a two year uh, rest, you know, because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, uh, we, the entertainment industry, we, we were just classified as an industry by the government of Nepal, you know, that 
mm-hmm. uh, has yet to be seen. Uh, the, the fruits of that those decisions is yet to be seen in the industry. Mm-hmm. But uh, industry is our industry is in a drastic change. The moment of drastic change at the moment in terms of the rights. Who owns what rights, and how do you exercise those rights? Uh, not only in Nepal, but outside of Nepal as well. You know, it, since 1990s, uh, you know, the population, the many of our youngs, you know, we migrated outside, just like me and you. Mm. So we we have created a big, very big societies outside of Nepal, right? We are not only confined within the territory of Nepal. True. So what that, yeah, what that has entailed is that has. Uh, you know, brought a lot of challenges and also a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. And especially in the entertainment field, uh, we take it as an opportunity. Uh, for, exa- for example, you know, uh, when our when we have a good films, uh, mm-hmm. now we can release worldwide, right? Mm-hmm. Our favorite stars, our singers can tour worldwide. You know, uh, mm-hmm. there's events in every corner of the world where Nepal Nepalese are. You know, there's a Dosni celebration, Holy Holy celebration, Tiar. Um, e- even the teas, right? Everything gets celebrated, mm. and there are so many events. Uh, and and you know, we we bring our culture here. We we love our culture. We love our music. We love our fans. Um, and and you know, the, the best thing uh, about our community outside of Nepal is mm. uh, we are trying to pass those cultures and the values back to the second generation and the third generation of Nepalese living outside. So, you know, mm. looking at all those things, um, I think the Nepal is in the verge of, uh, there are also so many uh, young um, makers mm-hmm. and, uh, and the artists who have completely gone through a different route than our traditional route to define their music in different way different difference in a different way mm-hmm. uh, i have also known about the different uh, collaboration that might happen uh with the international industries uh, very soon right mm-hmm. so uh, th- these these are all the positive aspect uh, even if you look into the bollywood or the uh, you know the billions mm-hmm. of dollars has been invested uh, by the big corporation like netflix and amazon uh same thing is happening in south korea so mm-hmm. it, sooner or later, that is going to come into Nepal as well, because uh, Nepal also has a very big uh, entertainment market. Mm-hmm. So so I, I think the future of Nepali music industry or the entertainment mm-hmm. industry in rural is uh, very bright. We just mm-hmm. have to uh, tighten our belt and just be ready uh, for the big change coming our way. Um, yeah, it's true. Like, since in today's world, with all these technologies around the world, you know, like where... You just upload it and millions of people can just see it overnight. You know, it's like much easier for people mm. to actually put out the content than before, yes. I guess, right? But yeah, I think yeah, so. it's more harder to somehow get the audience attention than mm. before because everyone is out there easily. Everyone can see everyone. Like, like let's say before, like if you were in any movie, let's say. Just a small role, you know, if only you got a small role of like one net or one dialogue in a movie. I think that would make you famous somehow, you know, like you were in a Greek movie. But now I don't think it really matters. Is that yeah. right or is this what I think? Yeah, we, we, we are bombarded with the content, you know, that if that's what you are saying. You know, before mm-hmm. we, we used to wait for the films, big films, right? If Raja, Raja Samal Dai, yeah. uh, if it's playing films we're releasing, then people would like to wait for several months but that was a there was an old world you know we are mm-hmm. we are in the 21st century we're in 2021 everything is instant mm-hmm. so even the content you know it, it's not three hours long content mm-hmm. is like 30 seconds long tiktok yeah, instagram TikTok. stories so, so so yeah so ugc uh, the contents have changed the way we present contents have changed mm-hmm. uh and as you, as you mentioned um you know so, if you if you have a uh, if you if you are a creator a genuine creator and if you mm. can uh, address the interest of the people and if you have something different to give then mm. it really doesn't matter how many other people are creating contents you know it's mm. it, it's it's meant to happen for you and it's, it is going to happen for you there there are songs uh, you know for example full mm. uh, it, it took 10 years uh, for it to get recognized right mm-hmm. so it, it's just about so many elements coming together for you. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you have a talent, if, if you have something unique to give it to the community, then, you know, you, you, 
you don't have to worry about anything else. Um, mm-hmm. and, Things are much and, easier. Uh, other, yes. Then the other thing that you talk about is uh, the emergence of uh, medias, uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, Vivo, mm-hmm. uh, Spotify, Amazon, right? So what these um, uh, platforms have done is they have democratized the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So you don't need a big level or you don't need a big corporation to back you up. Uh, so that you could release your songs, you know, so mm-hmm. so you can make films or short films, or you can present your stories. You know, you don't need that. Uh, you can do it yourself. You can you can have your cell phone and you can shoot mm-hmm. the films in your cell phone and release your uh, films. Uh, same with the uh, same with the music. You know, even the recording, you can record your music inside your own house. Exactly, with, with we're doing it inside our right? house right now. See. <laughs> So you don't you don't need a big studio, you know. So if you really have a talent, then there's nothing stopping you from getting out there and, and making your name. So sure. that that is the uh, that is the biggest change uh, I think we have seen in our lifetime. You know? uh, yeah, and I think we need to adapt to that. Like even with yes. the t- television, I think it's changing. Like I can see all the television shows in YouTube now. You know. Yeah. Like yeah. we had Without to wait for the TV show. <laughs> now we don't. <laughs> yeah, they 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 need the viewers, and viewers are in. internet you know they they mm. are they are the digital media uh the, another interesting thing is uh, since everybody uh, is adapting uh, you know we, we are in a digital world what that makes is you know uh, the music music business is fragmented mm-hmm. but at the same time because they are uh, we, we we are now on digital era now we can track all the fragments mm-hmm. right we can track them and we can put out the reports of them we know what song is getting how many hits Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, which getting how much royalties from what platform? Mm-hmm. So when when we ha- when we have this much of data, mm-hmm. so you know, this has created another opportunity uh, in the world. Uh, if you um, you know I uh, if you saw our poster a few days ago, we mm-hmm. we said you know we can we now we can fund uh, any artist who is out there uh, mm-hmm. looking uh, you know who, who is looking to uh, release their album. We can we can. Uh, give them an advance of up to 10 million dollars mm-hmm. so how did it happen that happens because of the digital media because mm. we can how track, does that you know, work we, like we know what, who the artist is. what we, is that program like could you please elaborate a bit? so that yeah that is what i'm saying let's say you are an artist right you you mm-hmm. have you have released two songs two singles or the two albums it doesn't matter mm-hmm. how many songs you have and and you have uh, you have shown us some kind of traction in your career mm-hmm. right so now now what you want to do is you want to go further you know you you have a bigger plan but bigger plans need the capital the backup right so mm-hmm. so if you could show us that you are genuine you have unique something unique to present and there are there is market for that there is people who is following you who is listening to you and mm-hmm. if you put out something out there in the future uh, that it's going to be successful mm-hmm. then then we will back you up you know we will help you design your career uh, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know we will give you all the network with the, all the resources that mm-hmm. you need and also the capital and the best part of it is you don't have to give us any rights mm-hmm. you can keep your rights right you can keep your royalties mm-hmm. so and you can take your money and uh, you know go where you want to go mm-hmm. so and when we and the and the interest what is the interest for us is like when we let's say we free pay you ten thousand dollars then mm-hmm. what we get is we get twelve thousand dollar backs that's it mm-hmm. we the the financial in, in the united states uh, just in last six months there were four billion dollar raids to do just this so okay. when it, yes so there's billions of dollars in the market so that money is going to flow everywhere and it is also mm-hmm. coming to the music industry so uh the nepali level also needs to jump into it you know they they need to start thinking uh, progressively because nothing can stop nothing no one can stop this money from flowing to the nepali artist mm-hmm. uh, in coming days right so instead of trying to stop it they, it's better if they also jump in and uh, change the way they we make music or you know uh, start they need to make an strategy for the future mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. this is a uh, you know when we when we talk about nepali music industry the rights uh, music rights are the biggest issues we mm-hmm. facing right now. so this is going to change those issues for the future artists mm to so if someone wants to participate in that program of yours what they do have to do like let's say i have a friend uh, who can... is producing music right so he just released his let's say first song yes. so 
what does he have to mm-hmm. do to get that grant so so the artist uh, need to be somehow successful successful for uh, to be able to uh, get approved for the backup right mm-hmm. they they must have at least one song they need to own the sound recording mm-hmm. and those, those sound recording needs to be distributed by the distributor like us uh, or, or anybody else the team pure city city baby whatever you use mm-hmm. and uh, they there needs to be a data to backup mm-hmm. like i said uh, the spotify must be paying you the youtube has to pay you no okay you need to show that there 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 are uh, listeners you know there 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 are fan you have a fan base out there mm. so when mm. you show us that when you when you that gives us confidence to back you up okay um, okay but that, and what that also does that you know that it, that will also stop uh, these funds from going to a wrong hands you know mm-hmm. so that it will go to the artist who can actually make it in the industry and not the one of these who are who just want to you know yeah. take the funds and lose the music and don't care about their uh, anything else so it's not like for a new it's for someone who is already in the industry and already had done something and someone who want to scale up more yes okay cool cool oh, so we 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 are, we are also in the plan uh, for uh, um you know op- operating a new label so mm-hmm. when we do that then uh, those opportunities will be available for the for the uh, artist recording artist who wants to release their first song mm. so that is also on the way so this is this this particular uh, service is for the ones that who has already shown uh, that they have some kind of traction uh, in their career mm, true true before we move on maybe introduce us to what you do what your company is you know so that people could know your expertise so yes. what is nepsine <laughs> when did you found it when did you found it or when did you create it and what it's doing right now or what has it done in the past give us like a brief history of nepsine yeah so it's it's a very uh, you know long long history uh, mm-hmm. so back in 2012 you know 2011 and 2012 were we you know i i, I was in uh, dallas texas mm-hmm. dallas texas is one of the biggest metropolitan you know uh, we have like 30 to 50000 nepalese living there so uh, what what we uh, observe is uh, we saw uh, uh, nepalese producers mm-hmm. they would come to the united states if they are lucky if they get a visa and they would bring their films in a suitcase right now they now they will land in new york and mm-hmm. uh, they they will have to wait at least a month to have that screening of that film in new york mm-hmm. so once they do that now they have to move to a boston right and it will it will take another month and from that is only the eastern part of the uh, united states when you mm-hmm. when you have to go to the south then that will take another month or two to finish the southern uh, territories and from there then you have to move to the west so film if film gets released in april mm. they will still be screening the films in in december of that year okay. so that is like seven, seven to eight months you know uh, and when we when we saw that uh, we decided that you know this is not a very efficient way of distributing films mm-hmm. so what we did, did is you know we um, um, we opened a business we opened uh, nepsine it is a uh, short form of nepali cinema mm-hmm. so the primary focus was to solve the distribution problem that our industry was having at that time mm. so so we created a network of 25 to 30 cities you know we uh, we we put down uh, the resources mm-hmm. uh, and what that did is like instead of 7 to 8 months now a uh, producer could just stay in kathmandu and mm-hmm. they could send us a file and we'll do the distribution for them right Mm-hmm. and we we could complete that in 2 to 3 months so mm-hmm. before it was one film or two films a year now back in 2018 when at the peak uh we did around six six films in that year mm-hmm. and we paid around uh, two crores uh to the we sent back two crores to the nepali film industry at that mm-hmm. time so so the distribution part of the nepali film uh Uh, was largely solved so mm-hmm. at the same time you know we we start uh, seeing the chatters in nepali music industry uh, something about the royalties uh, you know uh, the singers were not getting these royalties there were mm-hmm. also some issues with the transportations uh, you know where, where you register your transportations uh, mm-hmm. so uh, they were supposed to pay the royalties but they were not paying it so 
So um, we we also saw uh, some of our favorite artists, the creators. Uh, the, we we saw the condition of them, the, the event that happened with, with them. So it, it just knocks knock us out, you know. The mm -hmm. people who we love a lot, who with whom we uh, did a show, you know, uh, the person who was admired by whole country, mm -hmm. and they, they had such. We, we thought that they had such a uh, successful music career, but when when those events started appearing on social media or in the television you know uh, it, it just hit us very hard right mm -hmm. and we decided to uh, do the research on the uh, problem what is the you know we, we started doing the research on music rights uh, mm -hmm. what are the music copyrights who is supposed supposed to own the copyrights and mm -hmm. what what does that mean you know to the artist or the to the creators Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean? Uh, what does morning? this mean actually? Maybe for our listeners who don't know, what does a royalty mean? What does a copyright in a music or a cinema mean? Yes. So, so you know, we, we decided to work uh, on this particular sector. This is uh, somehow a very legal sector, right? Mm -hmm. Of music business. Oh, yeah. So, uh, when you create a music, you know, wow how the music there there are like 15 to 20 people you know or more than that people works to create one music mm -hmm. so depending on the contribution they have on creating uh, you know uh, uh, creating this music uh, mm -hmm. they receive a particular rights mm -hmm. uh, or the royalty rights so okay. if you are a lyricist you have a rights on your lyrics. yeah right so you mm -hmm. own the lyrics no el nobody else can use that lyrics again without your permission Okay. So if you are a composer, uh, you compose certain kind of uh, progression, you know, so certain kind of uh, lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the way people sing particular lyrics. So if you are a composer, you own the composition rights. Nobody else can, again, reuse those rights without your permission. Mm -hmm. If you are an investor, if you are a financer, you own the song. Mm. So, um, if you are a musician, maybe you have just played uh, some few chords in a studio or maybe flutes, right? Uh, mm. Or maybe a guitar or tabla, whatever. So if you are there, uh, if you are performing, if you are singing, or if you are doing a back vocal, or if you are arranging a song, uh, you know, if you are doing a mastering of a song, then you own a certain rights. You, you, you reserve some kind of rights, you know, and those mm -hmm. rights are legal rights. So what that entails is every time that song gets played, you know, or mm -hmm. used or exploited in any kind of commercial situation, then that commercial user has to obtain a rights, mm -hmm. which means they have to pay a certain fees, a licensing fees, uh, to be able to use that song uh, mm -hmm. in their events, in their promotions, in their marketing, you know, whatever they want to use it. If they want to do a stage show, you know, they, mm -hmm. they have to pay a certain fees. And those fees are called royalties. Okay. Like what the royalties are you know uh, when a song makes money that that money is called royalties mm -hmm. um, so um and and we also uh they, there is also something called intellectual property intellectual property mm -hmm. is uh, you know is it is, is the rights that is given to the inventor or the creator so in, in music the creators are the one who writes the lyrics mm -hmm. compose that lyrics who compose the music Mm -hmm. So th these are the two people who owns the absolute rights in a particular music. So mm -hmm. when they these two things comes together and we record a song, then a uh, sound recording owner, then we call a financier or the label that owns the particular song. If they re if they reuse these lyrics and uh, mix the composition again and make another song, a little mm -hmm. bit different version, then another person might own that song. Okay. So they can create thousands of songs based on that particular formula. So they are the real owner of that music, their owner of that song. So mm -hmm. every time you use your song, you use that particular song commercially, then you have to compensate uh, these two people. But in our industry, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, and those are the, uh, if you, when we, when we talk about a lyricist, what mm -hmm. comes, in our, the, comes, comes in our mind is like somebody who is wearing kurta survival, uh, who is wearing chapel, right? They have a small bag hanging. And they are the creator. They were supposed to get the most benefit out of this music, but they are not mm -hmm. the one who is getting them. So we decided to take matters on our hand. You know, we couldn't just sit and see the, see the injustice 
happening in our own industry, we decided, you know, instead of uh, pointing fingers to another person, each other, uh, why don't we do something about it? So we started doing a research in back in 2017. Mm-hmm. And it, it took us two, almost two years to finally understand, you know, what the rights are, what the copyrights are, what the law says, uh, you know, the use of those laws. Um, so uh, after that, we started right now. Uh, uh, we represent around uh, 300 uh, Nepali music creators okay. in worldwide territory. That means uh, we control the music rights in almost all the hit songs of Nepal. Almost, uh, almost 90 percent of the hit songs in Nepal. Mm. Uh, so every time there's a show, there's events. Uh, we our rights gets matched like person as of today. Uh, okay. If you talk about the voice of Nepal uh, or the dance mm-hmm. or the you know any, any kind of reality shows, we have around eighty percent match. Uh, the, the, song, the songs that they play, you know, mm-hmm. we have we manage the rights of eighty percent of the songs that they use. So this is. This is so this is the position we are in. Now what we are doing is uh, we are trying to uh, get few more artists on board into our system. Mm-hmm. So after that happens, uh, we'll start the licensing of our music uh, in worldwide territories. So mm-hmm. there, let's say there's a restaurant in uh, Sydney or there's a restaurant in uh, mm-hmm. If they're using our music, if they're using playing music from the, uh, from the YouTube. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we go to them and we ask them to pay a certain small amount of fee maybe a one dollar a day mm-hmm. so and we will collect that uh, royalties from uh, around 300 to 400 restaurants all around the australia mm-hmm. so when they all come together it is going to be a significant amount and that money that royalties is going to flow back to the industry mm-hmm. and it is going to go to the every participants including arranger the lyricist mm-hmm. the composer the singers uh, the producers um, you know any Anybody, the focus puller, the cinematographer, director, anybody mm-hmm. who is involved in making music or the music videos or the films, they are going to get compensation out of this. So mm-hmm. after five years, the industry, uh, if something uh, like of 2020 happens after five years, maybe in 2025 or 2026, then we will not have to go outside and uh, you know, create the GoFundMe page or we, to support our artists or support our mm-hmm. industry. It is going to make that changes. Uh, it is also going to uh, bring a lot of investment. You know, the, when the money starts going back to the industry, it is going mm-hmm. to the portion of that is going to be reinvested in the industry. So that is going to change the quality of the music that uh, mm-hmm. and the quality of the music videos. Of uh, maybe we'll see some technical cap- capabilities in a couple of years. So you know, I, I, from where I. Uh, it is going to be a uh, groundbreaking uh, for mm. our industry. And, to and every Nepali, yeah, so every Nepali is going to be very proud of what our industry is going to become in mm-hmm. five to six years from now. I can see that. It's going to be great because the thing you're doing, it's like something, I don't think anyone, I don't, I don't know much about this. Maybe you know much about this. Like, I don't think there are much people who are actually looking into this. Or I don't think our artists mm. even understand that this thing called royalty or this thing called copyright and, you know, you can... No. Earn money from your one song throughout your life. Is that right? Yes. That's true, right? Like, like Christmas song, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> like Dossi song, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know there's a Dossi song in Nepal, right? There's a Tiar song in Nepal. Bailini mm-hmm. Aina, you know, Agana. So uh, there is a song from uh, first uh, private Nepalese film, uh, My Tigger. Yo mm-hmm. Mero Piaro, My Tigger, My Tigger, My Tigger, right? So... You know, that song in in every events, almost like 90% of the events mm. starts with that song, right? Yeah. If it's a Dossi, Dossi celebration, then, you know, there's a Dossi song. It plays all around the world. Mm-hmm. So when you do that, you know, when you are benefiting, you, you are commercially benefiting out of these songs, then it is your duty that uh, uh, you give back something back to that creator. Mm-hmm. And uh, the best thing is, you know, we we have a law on our side. Uh, in Australia, if you if you infringe upon somebody's copyrights, then the, the if you are a commercial owner, mm-hmm. and then your fines are up to five hundred thousand dollars for one song. Mm, okay. So that so that that gives us a very uh, big advantage in pursuing, uh, you know, the uh, the goal that we are trying to set for our industry. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So. So, so, they, so on mm-hmm. one side, the creators, right, who are not getting uh, compensation uh, for the work that they do, 
or it is only on very unfair or is it only one particular section of the industry is getting compensation and all mm. others uh, are struggling right now and although and on the and on the, on the other side we have a community all around the world that is infringing upon the uh, upon the copyrights of these creators mm-hmm. we, even i do that <laughs> yes so, and and that is creating a big legal uh, problem for them you know they they are mm-hmm. uh, you know haldo khande bans it right mm-hmm. so they are digging we are digging our grave ourselves so you know if i go out there in sydney and if i uh, bring a lawsuit to any of the restaurants today they mm-hmm. might lose their business you know they they're going to lose their uh, lose the only source of income for their family their family is back in nepal mm-hmm. uh, so you know we we were trying to uh, bring a very mature solution to this so that mm. you know the whole our community also get, going to get uh, copyright uh, protection from us mm-hmm. and the creators are going to be uh, fairly compensated compensated for their work you know for their life works so we are we are trying to create the platform that is going to bridge the gap between these two mm-hmm. communities and it's going to help both of them um, that's good to know so basically if i'm using a song it doesn't matter if i'm doing a cover of it in youtube or if i'm playing that song in a concert or whatever you know i have to pay something for that is that true yes so cover songs like what what are the cover songs cover songs are you know you are mm-hmm. not going to cover a song that only has 10000 views you are going to cover something that is already famous exactly uh, mm-hmm. which is already reputable right so what we are, well, by doing the cover of that song what you are doing is you are transferring the reputation of that song to yourself mm-hmm. right you are benefiting from the song mm-hmm. also the copyright owner owns the exclusive rights on that song so if if he doesn't if the person or the copyright owner doesn't want these songs to be get covered mm-hmm. then he has that rights to stop everybody else uh from covering his songs or her songs mm. so they have the exclusive rights uh but the cover song is the best part of the cover song what we are doing with the cover song is mm-hmm. um we have selected around 20 cover artists in Nepal and we um uh had a, a contract with the most of them by now mm-hmm. uh, what we do is we license the cover song uh they the cover song owners uh, the cover song artist will pay certain fees and they mm-hmm. will pay a certain percentage of their revenue so uh the revenue that they earn from uh, distributing that song mm-hmm. so we help them distribute the song we help them record the song we'll ha- we'll help them clear the rights of the song mm-hmm. so that to, that way the creators gets any immediate benefits mm-hmm. it's very legal mm-hmm. uh the cover artists will not fall into any uh, comply you know regulatory issues mm-hmm. and the best part of that is now the copyright artist can legally own that particular sound recording and they can earn <clears throat> the royalties from that sound mm-hmm. recording now so if that sound recording get plays in the uh, again in the restaurants in sydney mm-hmm. then the restaurant owner whatever they pay the licensing fee the part of the licensing fee will go to that copyright artist so it is not only one way we are working mm-hmm. we are working for everybody um everybody that is involved in this chain uh, in, in this ecosystem mm-hmm. uh before that before before our licensing what would happen is you know if you cover a song mm-hmm. either either it's illegal or the owner will take the 100% royalties out of your channel right mm. you will take everything mm. with us it is not it doesn't happen but if you if i take everything from you you are not going to cover another song you are not going to make another cover of another song right okay. i want you to make cover like 20 covers in a year so what we do is we we share the revenue with you mm-hmm. yeah and we also give you the rights to the sound recording and you can relicense that la- sound to us and mm-hmm. we license that sound to again to the rest of the music users worldwide i don't think there will be like a particular this and, uh, percentage thing, or that percentage with the um, with the stage shows uh, same mm-hmm. thing with the sorry like i wanted to understand like is there like a particular percentage that a composer gets or a singer gets or it's different depending upon different songs and everything so, so you know there 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 are different kind of copyrights in the music right there is a mm-hmm. sound and there is a composition copyright mm-hmm. if you are doing a cover depending on the use or the exploitation you need to take permission from diff- separate parties mm-hmm. it's not necessary that you need to take uh, permission from every uh, individual party when you use the song so when you when you cover a song what you are using is you are using your lyrics and you are mm-hmm. using a composition mm-hmm. you are not using a sound or you are not using the vocal mm-hmm. of the original singer so you don't need a permission from those people 
What you need the permission is from the publisher of the lyricist and publisher of the music composer, right? Mm. So when you have the permissions, then you can cover songs. Like I said, you, I told you before, mm -hmm. the lyrics and the composition is the key. It, mm -hmm. It's the master key. So using that master key, you can create unlimited number of songs, unlimited number of songs. So cover songs are one of them. Mm -hmm. Mashups are one of them, you know. Uh, remix, uh, when you do a remix, what you do uh, in the remix, you use the original sound, right? Then mm -hmm. when you use the original sound, now you have to take a permission from the sound recording owner as well. Um, the labels or the financier of the original song. So it depends on what you are using, how you are mm -hmm. using, where you are using. So mm -hmm. all these factors comes into your play. Um, so there's not like this particular thing, number that you should be paying or anything. It depends upon a lot of yeah, factors. No, no. The other question no, that you were no. just talking about, about the cover videos, you know, let's say there is a song, you know, and then let's say any 1974 80 song, right? They have their own original rights, original composition and everything. And let's say I make a cover yes. of their song, right? Which is kind of similar yeah. because in covers, you don't see much of difference. It's kind of similar. Sometimes they are different, but let's say they are similar, yes. right? And as you said, yeah. I would have those rights. I will pay them. I will done and the cover song will be mine, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, when you cover, some, cover, mm -hmm. cover song, yeah. Mm -hmm. The cover, cover song, song will be, be you. <laughs> yes. But the lyrics and the composition embedded into that cover song is still going to be with the 1974 80. Mm-hmm. So if like, let's say like now, let's say there's another person, right? Let's say X and he's playing the song, yeah. but that is my cover song instead mm -hmm. of the original song. Who gets the revenue from that? Or how do you figure that out? Well, so it depends on where that particular person is playing the music. Mm -hmm. if, if, if they are playing in a stage and they are not using your particular cover sounds, then the 1974-80 gets the, all the revenue from royalties from that particular uh, event. Image. Yes. But mm. for example, if it's a, if it's a restaurant and mm. they are playing a video in mm. their television, so now the, you will get the uh, royalties. Mm. If, you, if, you, if you are a producer of a video, you will also get the producer side of royalties. Mm. If you are a singer, you will also get the singer side of royalties. If you are also playing, uh, you know, prefer, uh, playing as an actor in a video, you will also get that particular uh, side of the royalties. Okay. But, but again, because 1974 Eddie was the uh, original composer and the original lyricist of the song, they will get the 50%, uh, they will get the audio part. Uh, when, you, when you come to the audio part, they will get mm. the 50% of the audio and 50% of the audio will go back to you again because you are a singer and you are a producer, mm. you will get the uh, 50% of the royalties. So mm. it will get distributed, you know. Uh, evenly between video and audio uh, if it's only audio you know depends on how it is being used how mm -hmm. and how many times and it mm -hmm. my next question would be how do you track this like how do you know that i might be play i might be having like a small party out here in my home and maybe playing the 90 cent for 80 music how would you know that i'm playing that yes yes so you know it is uh, <laughs> we, 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 we know where our communities are mm -hmm. We know where our businesses are. We know the event companies. We know the singers. We know we know the industry. Mm. Uh, you know, so we very pinpointed uh, where it is more likely to get our songs played. Mm -hmm. So we we pinpoint, and we also have technology uh, that that tracks uh, that tracks the uses of the songs, like you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, uh, even in the YouTube, you can see where your songs is getting played. You can pinpoint the location, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that we, we deploy uh, so many tactics. We also scan the social medias. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we all have a local representative uh, who goes to these parties and record the audios, uh, mm -hmm. the video. So we, we, we have a very big amount of data, you know, uh, from all around the world. Uh, it's sitting in our servers at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, every event organizer, every uh, restaurant, every... Um, um, you know, social organizations, you know, we, we have uh, somehow, we have collected some level of data uh, mm. and we know what they have played before. And, uh, and uh, since now we are, uh, you know, uh, introducing the system, mm. now going forward, they can come into the system and they can say us, you know, this many of songs I have played, uh, this, this, this song is we, what we have played. Mm. And our database is going to automatically calculate the royalties and based on those uses. 
So uh, we are bringing technology, we are bringing the mm. arts and minds, you know, we are bringing community, um, everything is coming together for this particular issue. Mm-mm. Okay, so it's not like you have like some kind of data in it and and whenever it plays somewhere, somehow you get notified of that. Is it something like that or something different? Uh, no, no, no. That will be very overwhelming. And uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, yeah, we'll also face uh, privacy issues, right? But yeah. let's, say, let's say there's a restaurant called Himalayan Restaurant. Then mm. you know that those are Nepalese restaurants, right? And and we track the, uh, uh, right? you know, our community data in that particular place. If it's a Sydney, then we know there are 60,000 people or 100,000 people living in Sydney, right? Mm. Nepalese people. That means if that particular restaurant is based in an area where a majority of Nepalese lives, mm-hmm. then they, those restaurants are more likely to cater our music to those audience. So we know they play. So mm. it's, it's only a matter of, you know, going to that particular place and, uh, you know, look, look, uh, you know, Put the metadata in and see what mm-hmm. comes in the internet or you know what we could find if we send somebody in mm-hmm. what does the metadata look like for us and, uh, metadata is means uh the name of the song the sound you know uh who composed the music uh, mm-hmm. who wrote the music all the data uh, in association with that particular music so whenever a song is out there like either in youtube or any other platforms they go out with that metadata and basically, I think it's based yeah, they, on that. They, they will, yes, they are supposed to go. And if they don't, then uh, there is also a way to send those data to YouTube directly. Mm. And that's what we come in, you know, as a publisher. Because when you send a song, uh, usually uh, the song owner or the financer only sends their data. Mm. They don't send our data or the lyricist data or the composer data. And that's why we come in as, as their particular uh, exclusive uh, representative. We mm. collect those data, we send it to the YouTube and we collect the royalties uh, for those uh, uh, lyricists and the composer. Mm. Okay, that's nice to know. Is yeah. by talks we just had right now, it just feels like you can earn money from anything if you know how to play guitar or if you know how to write a song or if you know how to compose. I think you can earn money from any of that, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's like bringing the democracy into the industry, you know, in, into mm. the studios or in, into the house of every particular person or you know, the entities that works in the in this industry. Mm. Um, it, it is also about leveling the playing field, uh, you know, uh, securing our uh, talents. Uh, talents. So if you see mm. there, there is a, you know, there, there, there is a rush uh, in Nepalese industry that many of our talents are leaving the industry and going outside, right? Mm-hmm. So when we do this, we say that, you know, they, they, there is a financial security, there is a social security for you in the industry, then they, we, we will be able to keep many of them in our industry. Mm-hmm. And that will help, help us uh, stop the knowledge flight uh, or, you know, intellectual flight that we, had, we have been experiencing in our industry for like, like uh, last 10 years. Mm. So that is going to change the quality. That is going to change the knowledge that we're going to pass into the next generation and everything. So totally. it's very important. Yeah. So I think we yeah need- we we are we are going to see a black pink or the BTS moments happening probably in ten years from now. You know, that that day is not far. So yeah, it should be like the way you have like the things you have just said right now. Like the way we could make money. I don't think, as I said before, I don't think people even understand that. Are, are you guys doing anything like in order to make people aware about these kind of things? Because I think you know, I know a little bit, just a little bit about it, you know. Because as you said, it's all about laws and rights and all those things. It's kind, of, it's, it seems kind of complicated for a normal person like me. So, are you guys also working on to like making people aware about these things? So you know, our main intention here is you know not to. Uh, offend anybody, right? Not to mm. bring any kind of damages to anybody, or not to make anybody's life difficult or their family's mm. life difficult. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're simply trying to secure the rights of our creators. Mm. Uh, we're trying to help uh, improve the condition in our industry. And we're, we are also trying to help our companies stay compliant to the legal uh, the copyright uh, copyright compliance. Right? We, we want them to uh, be protected mm. so that as I said, you know, there's uh, around 20 to 50 people works in creating one particular music. Now imagine if you play two music, that that means that uh, 
there could be 400 people uh, contribution that you have just used. So that mm -hmm. creates a big amount of liability. You know, it's not it's not about uh, when you know it, it's about you know when those one particular person is going to come and knock at your door. So that is that is a liability. That's a big liability, and mm -hmm. and and that liability is not small. You know, it is. It has a capacity to disrupt your life and the life of your families. So, uh, so our approach is to, you know, uh, solve that issue for you. Take those responsibilities out of your shoulders and put it on our house. And uh, by doing that, we are uh, creating a bridge between the industry and the commerce community, uh, mm. community, bridging them together. And we are helping them, um, you know, um, helping them. Uh, you know, if, if it's a business, then helping them mm -hmm. stay in compliant with the rules and regulation. And if it's creators, we are helping them uh, protect their rights. We are mm -hmm. also teaching them what their rights are and what that right entails, you know, uh, means to them and how they can ex exercise their rights uh, in different scenarios. So mm -hmm. it's a big work uh, that we have done. Uh, as you said, you know, there, there's a confusion in public. You know, forget about public. There, are, even the creators doesn't know many things about these rights. You yeah. know? So we, when we went to the industry first, they were like, "No, this cannot be right." You know, and we said, mm -hmm. "No, this is this is how it works." You know, this is how it works all around the world. This is what the law says in Nepal. So even the Nepal law is mm -hmm. very similar to international law. So you know, you have these rights, and you should exercise these rights. And it, it took it took us. Well, to make them understand uh, mm -hmm. it, it, what that means for them, and right now we we have around three hundred creators mm -hmm. and very big creators like uh, somebody Basco is with mm -hmm. us, uh, you know Ranjit Gazmir. If you if you hear any cover song, then it's more likely it's from Ranjit, Ranjit Gazmir. Mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, Arjun Pokhrel, uh, mm -hmm. Sharma, right? Uh, Chakrabam, many many many. Uh, Many of the lyricists and the composer and the sound recording owners, mm -hmm. they have joined hands with Nefsine. And we, we are coming to Australia very soon, by the way. Uh, we are launching our service maybe mm -hmm. within a week or 10 days uh, mm -hmm. from today. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. So you, you will see a big marketing push uh, in Australia. I would be I would be very like ready to see that and to have that, you know, because I think this is a great thing that you're doing, you know, like helping artists like that. Because in today's world, I think if you are a musician, if you are a filmmaker, anything, when you come from a place like Nepal, we don't have much scope, you know, like for if you're an artist, basically, yeah. if you're an artist, it's not considered as a proper job. You don't get that kind of, you know, yes. we are not as confident to go into that industry because that's what we see, like there is no scope. But the reality yes. is because of the internet, there's scope anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the thing thing with the entertainment industry, you know, it's a, it's a it's a very lucrative, mm. highly sought after, and it's very competitive uh, it competitive is. sector. You know, uh, when you when we talk about superstars, you can only have five to ten superstars in an industry at a given time. You mm. cannot have two thousand superstars. You know, yeah. Um, so that it's very very competitive, right? So that is that is why you need everything, you know. And it's not only about you; it's only it's also about the environment. It's also about where you meet. Mm. Uh, it's about the timing, you know. Everything has to come together for you to uh, grow into uh, to be larger than the life character, or like larger than the life uh, personality. Mm. Uh, being said that, uh, you know, even if you are not a superstar, you can still be a star. Mm. Uh, you can also earn a living uh, in the public music industry today. Uh, we we have around five thousand people uh, directly employed uh, by the industry as we speak today, mm. and there are so many indirect jobs. You know, um, if we talk about the tourism industry or mm. uh, food and housing industry, all are supported by the music. Mm. Um, you know, you know, we we have a gross domestic product of like around thirty billion dollars, right? Mm -hmm. What music does is we we create a mood for those labor force to go out there and do the production. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we think we, we, we have around one to 2% uh, of the share um, or, the, or the contribution in building that uh, gross domestic product for the country. Mm -hmm. So it's a very big industry. It touches everybody, it touches everything, every office, mm -hmm. you know, every transportation, so any, anything you do in a life, uh, you have a breakup, you are in a love, mm. uh, somebody passed away in your family, you know, mm. 
you have a birthday, you have a celebration, you have a wedding, every mm. time, you know, from, from you opening your eyes to when you go back to sleep, even, even when you sleep, you, you have something playing on, on your laptop, you know, yeah. it's a music, you know, nothing else. Yeah. So it is a very big life in shaping our um, part in shaping our life. Uh, mm. It's part of our culture. And, uh, you know, without music, there's nothing else. <laughs> you know, there's nothing. I, so I had this, yeah, I had this like scenario <laughs> in my mind right now. Tell me, how does it work? Like, let's say there's someone, right, who is using someone else's music and he doesn't know that there is even this copyright laws or things yeah. like that. Because I think we have this kind of situation, like, it's just an example, but with the thing with, I think, Chaka Panza, where I heard yeah. that a guy suicided because he yes. used it somewhere and something happened and that happened, you know. What yeah. are your plans to, you know, like, or what are your thoughts about that? Like how to control that? How to, you know, like somehow not let that thing happen again. Yeah. Of course, yeah, he's very course. right in saying that it's his movie and he has rights for that right now. But he, somehow... He, right. he, he, just, he was just lucky that, you know, that movie mm-hmm. uh, recouped its investment. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, making a film is very uh, big risk and 90%, 99% of the film doesn't, uh, recoup their investments exactly. and that's a couple that did that what happened uh with the person is very shared you know it shouldn't happen mm. uh, i think i think there is a need uh for all of us to work very hard in uh, you know uh, bringing this awareness to general public mm. and pub- public also needs to um, you know uh, be proactive in learning the copyrights and what the consequences would be uh, mm. if they are infringing upon somebody's rights you know, it's it's not only legal issues. It's a it's a it's a livelihood of many uh, musicians and the filmmakers, mm. right? If you, if I cannot get my money back, I won't be able to make another films. I I won't be able to invest back in the industry. You know, I won't be able to create employment for other two hundred people. Mm. So, you know, and um, and I think there is also a part where I think there is also a, something called negligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, a lot of a lot of us, you know, when we are young, uh, we, we have hard blood and we think, eh, nothing going to happen to me, you know, mm. how they are going to track us or even they track us, you know, they are not going to bring any lawsuits to, uh, against me. Mm. Uh, so that, that is a very misconception that we have. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we also have a, right now we have a Facebook groups of hundreds of thousands of people in a particular uh, groups, right? Uh, they, they are in a group. So when one person inserts the link, then 100,000 people are going to download that particular link. So yeah. um, they, they, I think uh, we, we need to come up with a solution. Uh, you know, every parties um, need to be responsible. They need to act naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the groups uh, such as this, they should take this, take the copyright infringement uh, cases in their particular groups very seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, Otherwise, there might be uh, some uh, repercussion. They might be liable for the damages if mm. they let that happen again and again. Um, and from also from the music industry and the film industry, that we need to work harder to make sure to let the people know that you know it's uh, it's a protected property and uh, people cannot uh, reproduce it or they retransmit it or you know yeah. infringe. It. Yeah. Uh, That's what I was I, asking you before too. Like, is there something happening to actually make people aware about things like that? Uh, yeah. I, I I do not see any uh, industrial push for this mm-hmm. uh, because you know, it's very hard to track uh, or, or do something uh, live on this kind of scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that, um, there, there is one uh, thing that is happening. Uh, the Film Development Board uh, in uh, connection with the government mm-hmm. uh, is bringing some uh, school syllabus uh, to you know take it to the primary level or the upper higher level mm. so that way they will be teaching about the films and they will be teaching about the magic and they will also be teaching about the copyright issues okay. so so uh, when we have a next generation is coming in they, they will be very well versed in these legal aspects and uh, what they should do and they shouldn't do but okay. the end is always going to happen uh, we just want that you know the damages that these infringements brings mm-hmm. Uh, so no, that's severe, you know, where one cannot operate their business again, mm-hmm. or one can make their friends or to make the music again. Yeah, it must be difficult, you know, like for being an artist because I I, am, I used to be a guitarist and actually quit it because I didn't find scope much scope in back in Nepal and it's just gone. But I still have some interest and I might get back into it. That's why I want to know more about things like this because this would be like really yeah, no, very no, helpful. No, if you, 
Yeah, if, if you are an artist, if you are a filmmaker, if you are a model, then you know there's a very big scope. You know, it's just a misconception that there isn't. Uh, it, it just takes a lot of struggle and uh, continuity, you know, to mm. reach to that level where you can make a living for yourself and your family or support. Um, you know, but there is there is a scope. Uh, mm -hmm. You can take, uh, take the example of many artists like Paulsa. You know, he does more than thirty videos mm -hmm. in a in a month, mm -hmm. right? There are many uh, actresses, Anshul Sharma. There's many heroines. Uh, Daya Hangrai, the mm -hmm. uh, most favorite artist. Uh, Siva Pariyar, Sugam Pokhreo. You know, every mm -hmm. every artist. They have tours all the time. They 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 do their shows all the time. They have uh, films in their hands. Mm -hmm. So. It's a very big industry, you know. Uh, we, we have uh, investment, did the direct investment of around 10 or I don't know how that translates into dollars, mm -hmm. but we there's investment um, around 10 or in Nepalese me, uh, entertainment industry every year. Okay, that is a very big, um, that's big, very big industry, yeah, yeah. for, for yeah. industry. Like that. So, yeah. you, ha you, you have been in contact with a lot of artists, a lot of people who are famous and non famous. What are some of the struggles of, you know, like artists, you know, being an artist, it's hard to have a living out of it, I guess, right? What are some of the struggles that you have seen? What are the issues that you might have seen around uh, us? Well, <clears throat> I think uh, the major issues is definitely, you know, the, if you are a performer, you know, mm -hmm. if you are putting out a record and your name is on the record as a singer or, or the performer or the recording artist, then then your life uh, is much uh, comfy. Mm -hmm. Then if you are working behind the camera or behind the scenes, or if you are arranging, or mm -hmm. uh, if you are a lyricist or a composer, then your life is much more harder. Hard, yeah. uh, nobody knows you, right? <laughs> yeah. And that limits the uh, financial openings for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even though you are the one who made it happen, uh, you know the financial benefits for you could be limited, mm -hmm. and that has that is why uh, you know we are working to bring that balance uh, in the industry. Um, um, and uh, I think uh, uh, for an artist, if you have a name, if you have a hit songs, uh, mm -hmm. majorly songs, then you will not have any problem, uh, you know, paying off your bills. But if you're not, it's very hard, it's, right? It's, sorry. Like if you're not very famous, if you're just starting out, you know, it's hard yeah, to so get in, you, I guess, are, right? Yeah, if you are starting out, then, you know, you, you have to take yourself as a iron, you know, an iron that is put up in a fire at the moment, mm. you know. <laughs> yeah, so you are getting saved for yeah. that big journey coming ahead for you. It's, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It might be, it will happen for somebody, but it's mm. not going to happen overnight for everybody. To make a name in, in the industry, it, it takes a continuous work of at least six to seven years. Right. Yeah. Then after after that you will have some stability um, in 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 the, in the industry, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a long journey, you know. Uh, so you just have to keep pushing, one one step at a time, second step at a time. It's a continuous. You you have to put out the best out there, and it, it is going to happen uh, for you eventually. So mm -hmm. you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be hopeless. You know, there is mm -hmm. a scope for a lot of people. Um, if you have a talent, then you could survive uh, pursuing your passion uh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I mean to say was more about like, <clears throat> how shall I explain this? Like, like for normal people, general people, they think like how stars or celebrities or artists, you know, like they are so famous, they are earning so much money, they have so much this and that and everything. But I don't think we actually see the struggles they do. You know, being an artist is oh, very yeah. hard. We don't, we don't, yeah. And, and there, is, there is not a, a lot of outlets uh, who focus on such stories. Mm -hmm. we, we focus on events, you know, uh, some, somebody said something to some Mahanaik and uh, that becomes an issue <laughs> and we talk about that issue for months. Yeah. And then we jump into the affairs of another person and we never talk about the struggles of a particular artist or the singer or the performer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that's because you, it, it might not be a very a selling story for a lot of outlets. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, to make a name out there, it, it is going to take a lot of tries. It's not going to happen. A lot of in trials. Yeah, yeah. 
do you have any stories anything like that a struggle story of any artist just back up the mind uh i know that you know novin came to try his first album mm mm-hmm. succeed you know sugam pokhel something happened mm mm-hmm. sabin ramani same thing happened mm mm-hmm. uh vikram bistra dai who who created the uh, pop genre in nepal mm-hmm. uh you know he they they were the seniors right they it was a very struggle that the period when they carry the music industry on their shoulders it was a very painful uh period for us right mm-hmm. um we we talk about marin gopal sir you know uh we we talk about uh, arun lama mm. so every every person that you talk you know they they come from a very very humble beginning you know and they mm. they they go through a lot to be where uh, where they are today you know um Yeah. So it's true. I appreciate real. any artist, you know, like any. Yeah, the thing is real. Yeah. Because me myself being in a band or trying that or me myself I'm trying I love filmmaking. I made a short movie recently and mm-hmm. I think that's where I'm going into to and maybe that's why I can understand like those people who have already reached to a certain level like the hardships they might have had to go through, you know, like especially being in a country like Nepal yeah. where you aren't valued much until I know you are a doctor or engineer, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's a big struggle and I really yes, very yes. like respect that respect all the artists whoever is out there you know it doesn't matter smaller or big whatever they are doing they are trying to do it's a hard thing to do it's a struggle to do and they are doing that no matter what so salute to all of them and yes, I think we are definitely. almost at the end of our podcast too so what's next happening mm-hmm. with Nepsine and I heard that you are also coming to Australia as you said for your marketing purposes and I think we have our Vikram Powell bro who is yes, going Vikram to be Powell. the representative uh, yes he he will after the new zealand and today for an epsine he's mm-hmm. our local partner uh besides that you know we will be launching in canada and the united states this year mm-hmm. uh we'll also be in europe this year uk and we have asia for uh, maybe early 2022 mm-hmm. um uh we we are hoping that uh, many of the levels uh and the music company join us in mm-hmm. this uh, in this effort and we are also hoping that you know we we get to keep the social fabric intact while when we are enforcing uh, our rights in these territories mm. uh, we we want to work with everybody um, you know uh, from the non-profit organizations the uh, business uh, 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 the business community mm-hmm. uh, our social community right and we also want to we 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 also want to bring the uh, be able to bring the changes uh, Changes and make people understand, you know, what these uh, are and how mm-hmm. that affects the creators and how that affects you, and what would be the thing to do in these particular conditions. Um, and uh, when we follow the, when you follow these rules, what changes that going to that is going to bring to the industry mm-hmm. uh, that we all love and we all want uh, it to succeed, right? So, so how that is going to translate uh, into the success of our industry? So mm-hmm. you know we. just ready uh we we have a uh, very big partnerships coming in mm-hmm. uh we have joined hands with uh, many many artists uh and we want to do the same for our business communities in australia new zealand and all around the world all right cool just the thing that came into my like could we like you know like have the royalties from podcast too can we like do like how about the copyrights for music are there is it also possible for something like a podcast uh for a podcast yeah if you are playing a music then uh you you have to pay a royalty no i mean uh, to say like let's say i have this podcast right so can i earn yes. royalties out of podcast yeah yeah i think you can do you can uh, you can distribute your podcast to spotify and amazon mm-hmm. uh, you can do that in youtube right so if, if they are paying you then you are earning royalties <laughs> so basically if you uh, put if your you, podcast into yeah. spotify or youtube and based on the downloads and yeah. everything you get some kind of royalties right Yeah, if if people are listening to you, then yeah, you will get the uh, certain earnings, right? You can also mm-hmm. do that in TikTok. You can also do that in Instagram or Facebook. Mm-hmm. Not only you, if somebody else copies your work and put their put it there in their channel, then you can also monetize those uh, contents for you. Mm. So yes. So in f- to do that, I think we need someone like you who could look into all of that. Ah, uh, yeah, you you can do it yourself. we mm. we are particularly uh you know work you know for a music and the films uh, mm. we have one yet work for the podcast mm. and podcast is very easy you can do it yourself you know there's a just like in youtube there's a facebook creators mm-hmm. page 
you can go to that page and do your settings you can do the same thing with the tiktok mm-hmm. uh, there are, i think there are also platforms where you can uh, you know upload your content in one place and that is going to distribute your content to every other channel yeah. so that is going to make your operations a little bit easier mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, yes, podcast anything that you create, you know, mm. it's yours. So you yeah, that's what right. I mean. That's what I wanted to know. Like, I think anything you could create or you could put online, or you can make royalties out of it. You could monetize it. It's just like how to do that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You just need to get approved and know uh, how to play the system, I guess. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Ranji, for coming with us today. We wish you best of luck. What you're doing is a great thing, actually. You know, like if only all the artists could make. get royalties out of what they are doing i think they would be much more inspired to do this thing more and more so thank you very much for what you are doing any last words for our audience or listeners well you know thank you thank you because the you know ani um uh, our bigram bigram ji has also connected us mm-hmm. um, yeah thanks I, to him uh, actually for yeah. this podcast so, you know, yeah we are we are very excited uh, for the work that we are doing for our industry and mm-hmm. uh, i just want that everybody who ever is listening to this podcast or who will listen in the future um you know come and support us mm. support your artists you know uh, we we are in a very dire situation where uh, we have to go and go for me every time something happens to us mm. so that we are trying to change that situation and i hope that uh, you will uh, support support our initiative uh, in every way in every way you can and thank you again for you and your podcast uh, no it was a pleasure it. to have your answer yeah thank you All right then see you soon if you like this video hit subscribe you can listen to the full podcast in youtube anchor apple podcast and spotify